We're barely in 2020, and yet year 2023 is taking on a Magadon or appointment with destiny type significance. Who succeeds President Buhari? If you're a keen observer of the Nigerian political space, you would have known by now that there are subterranean moves and realignment of forces all in preparation for 2023 election, election circle. Even when the president himself has stated that he's not interested in who succeeds him. In his own words, President Buhari said, succession to me is very funny because if I find anybody, I will create more problems for him or her. Let those who want to be president try as much as I did. Whether you are a fervent critic, whaler as they're called, of the president, or you're one of his ardent fans, Buhari as their, Buharist, as they, as, they call, as they call themselves, one thing is certain. His tenure expires on the 29th of May, 2023. We must come to the realization that 2020 is most likely the only year remaining that will be dedicated to serious, serious issues of governance. So 2021 to 2022 will be years of real politicking. Hence my questions. Who succeeds the president? What kind of leadership would our country require post 2023? What issue should the debates be centered on? Who are the front runners in the major political parties? Will there be geopolitical considerations? If, if we must get Nigeria working for all Nigerians, this is the time to begin this conversation. I, think, um, I, I like the fact that you're asking those questions and maybe as a result of some of the conversations we've had leading, uh, yeah. I'm beginning to realize that actually sometimes we have this victim mentality, almost like we can't do anything, you know, we're oppressed, but actually we, we, there's a lot we can do. So in terms of even saying what kind of debate should we have, Absolutely. we have the media houses, we can begin to have those discussions and drive the conversation towards what the we topics want. we want. And, and then in that way, we begin to frame the kind of leader we want and force those people to align themselves. Absolutely. So you know, rather than feeling, because you know, like I say, no, that we're very good at fighting for power for power's sake, we can actually set the tune. You know, he who pays the piper, so back to Dictates the taxpayer. The we can find ways to dictate the tune. We're not as weak and victimized as we think we are. We are weak and victimized. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we've entered the Stockholm Syndrome. You know, I mean, look, the media you talk about is, is controlled by the political players. I've worked in the media space, the top media. The only hope we have is social media, yeah. mm -hmm. which democratizes voices and opinions. Mm -hmm. um, when, but when we talk about traditional media, I can tell you that by maybe one or two, mm -hmm. every other person is aligned to one political Lead side of this narrative of fight for power. Yeah. I can tell you that. Pure and simple. Every other major media, um, newspaper, TV, they're all aligned. They're, they're factionalized already. And it's not a factionalized about ideology, as you find in the US, or the, whether, you know, um, rights, uh, small government, big government. This is about ethnic, this is about politics, uh, persons. It has nothing to do with conversations over narratives, over uh, should we restructure, should we not restructure, should we depend on oil, should we, not, should we be more solar, should we have a green economy, what kind of tax? It has nothing to do with that. It's about, you know, where you're from, this is my, this is my turn. That's what the conversation yeah, is all about. Yeah. And so it's interesting that uh, and when, you, when you put your, your advocacy, it's instructive to me what, what the president said. And he said, you know, if I may quote, what he said, he says, if I find someone, I'll create more problems for that person. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is the president in his own words. And this is the man who says things. Um, he's actually, you learn more from him um, when he says things that are not scripted. Yeah. Because he's speaking, and he, what he means, he means this thing, 100%. Mm. If you, so if you, if you bring out your head now that you're interested, yeah. and yeah. You're, going to be, you're going to face exactly in yeah. his own words. Yeah. And that's, we see these calculations even playing out now. Now, yes. Exactly. You know, in terms of the realignment, in terms of the, 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 there's, a, there's a big national newspaper that suddenly became anti uh, the, the, the president in the last couple of days. Um, and it's happening. Yeah. So the realignment is happening. The people who want to, who, and, and that's this man. That's what he's saying. And you need to take him seriously. So I think that um, the conversations around what should happen in 2023, I think we, we're going to have to depend a lot on 
driving that conversations, not through the media space, traditional media, but through social media, social media. and being able to drive that narrative. It's not even enough because social media is, just, is limited to a certain, um, but the vast majority yeah. of people are ignorant, yeah. uneducated, right. do not have the economic power, and they're just there looking for, when it's time for election, give me my salt, my rapper, my 2000 naira, and, and I'll vote, vote whoever. You. They're already captured. Let's just, let's, let's face that fact. Sorry, I'm being negative, but that's <laughs> my, my point Well, I think, I, I, think I really think that it's important that we're having this sort of mm. conversation right now at this time. And it's, it, we shouldn't always wait until it gets to that point yeah. before we begin to demand, okay, what we want, before we begin to engage in, you know, debate and all sorts. So um, I was having a conversation earlier all of the persons, you know, the people from minority group, the presidential can candidates in the just concluded 2019 elections, where are they today? The Most of them, their voices are silent. I don't know, they're doing and individual so, things, like if you observe them, but they're not, but they're not, do you, they're doing their individual. You came out, yeah. you came out for the nation. Mm. You wanted, you were interested mm. in, power, in the nation, yeah. in power. And all of a sudden, things are going to, and then your voices are silenced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is where I come in. I think it's important for day right now, you know, just, Contribute to nation building. Look at Shore, um, look at where he got him. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I was, yeah, I'm yeah. sympathetic to some of them because <laughs> the capital they expended, even in running for office, and, yeah, and the way the, the, the air was, in a way, sucked out of sucked them out because of, them. of the level of you know, infringement. I think it can be very demoralizing. You need to go back and recuperate a little bit, you know, after all that. That's, that's my take, anyway. And perhaps learn that you might never <clears throat> win an election. Unless you come together, maybe Unless they form a coalition. Yeah. I, I do agree with you there. Um, if you're interested in, in, in power uh, for the next election cycle, this is the time to start. Yeah, and you don't wait six months or nine months to wait. You start to, this is the time to start building co coalitions. This is the time to start building a narrative of what, why you want power. Yeah. When I say start to engage government, engage them positively as well. You could come up with suggestions. Mm -hmm. If you feel you know, there are policies that they need to look in another direction, it mm -hmm. shouldn't be always critical of the government. True. If you have solution, come up with solutions. You understand? It's our country anyways. Do you understand? We should not take an anti-Nigeria posture. No, nobody says it's, it's, it's not anti Nigeria. It's not anti Nigeria. Way, because to criticize the government. The understand the government, we're in a democracy. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you want. No, no. Yes. See, this is, this is, the narrative is simple. If you are um, in government, if I say things that even Ab initio will be will be purposeful for government. Right. It will, on the face of it, it will sound negative, negative. to you because you're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't That's think my I, point. I don't think I exactly. exactly. that. Because how do yeah. grown men get mm. up, mm. leave education, leave roads, leave everything, and just go straight to renovating? Yes, a that's obviously assembly. a problem. It tells you that there's a cost seven billion to, mm. to put up in the first place. Mm. Yes. Mm. So okay. make noise about it, yeah. and they'll they yeah. will drop the idea. Well, like Sandra said stock take and projections and overall prof fr profitable activity. Here's where we take stock of your feedback. Our last month standing and Shores rearrest. Pastor Momo says a lot, but here's the gist. To stay silent is not optional at this time. What I see playing out in Nigeria now that they have been pushed to the wall is that rather than revolting, they prefer to turn the fight to themselves by inf inflicting pain on one another. A bleak prognosis, Pastor Momo. We trust you are not a prophet. On bleaching babies, Bridget Miller Taylor says, bleaching a baby's perfect, soft, delicate, unblemished brown skin, I can't form coherent thoughts about that. Neither can we, Bridget. On the same topic, Torches Umwa cries says, who would want a bleached child, talk less of a baby? I came across that video of a child immersed in a pool of chemicals and her skin exfoliated. I almost gave up on life. Please, Torches, don't give up. Unfortunately, there's still plenty of that for us to advocate against. Some of us might say our work is cut, for, cut out for us. Let's keep the partnership going. We together with you. Do keep your comments coming in our, crucial, in our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with the previous broadcast, 
go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekene attempts to balance the scale of justice by introducing little matter of the mischief rule. <laughs> 